Well, good morning. It is certainly good to see uh, our crowd this morning, our crowd this morning. Uh, it's good to be together, whether we're together uh, physically or whether we're together in, through technology. It is just good to be together praising God this morning. So, if you remember last week, we talked about the Old Covenant versus the New Covenant and how the death of Jesus on the cross tore the veil and opened up our access to God uh, without having to go through the high priest as was in the, in the old law. And the, the, the more I thought about it this past week, the, the more that, that thought just continued to, to roll around. I, I, I thought we need to talk about that a little bit this morning. So we're going to begin uh, this morning with the children of Israel in captivity in Egypt. Now, if you remember in the book of Exodus, uh, the children of Israel are, are, are slaves in Egypt. God comes to Moses at the, uh, the burning bush and tells Moses that he is going to be the one to go back and lead the children of Israel out of bondage, out of slavery in Egypt. And we won't get into all the excuses and all the conversation, but just suffice it to say, Moses did eventually go back to lead the children of Israel out of slavery. And through his conversations with Pharaoh, there was tremendous resistance on the part of Pharaoh to let the children go. And so God brought about a series of plagues on Egypt. And they uh, were increasingly severe. And each time, Pharaoh would say, okay, and then he'd change his mind, and then he, he would go again. The pattern repeats itself over and over. But beginning in, in, in chapter 11, we're, we're just going to mention it. We're not going to go there specifically. But in chapter 11, God says, I'm, I'm going to kill the firstborn in all the land of Egypt. And so to avoid uh, that happening to the children of Israel who are living in the land, God gives them some instructions on how to avoid having their firstborn killed. So we're going to begin reading in Exodus chapter 12, beginning in verse 1. That's Exodus 12, beginning in verse 1. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, on the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the persons. According to each man's need, you shall make your account for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Now you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat it raw nor boil at all with water, but roast it in the fire, its head with its legs and its entrails. You shall let none of it remain until morning, and what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire. And thus you shall eat it, with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. So you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. So this day shall be to you a memorial, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance. 
Now let's skip over to verse 23. Verse 23 says, For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you. And you shall observe this thing as an ordinance for you and your sons forever. You know, as we, as we read that and we, we see the, the value, the importance of having that blood sprinkled on the door. I mean, can you imagine being one of the children of Israel and saying, Oh, that blood, you know, you know, I don't understand the reasoning behind that. And you don't sprinkle the blood on your door. And then when the destroyer comes, your firstborn is stricken dead. Because you didn't follow the simple instructions and put the blood on the door. Now there are some specific instructions about the, the, the Passover meal. Uh, when we had our, our adult um, Bibleville experience, when all our, our adult members got to go through our Bibleville, if you were a part of that, you, uh, you got to be a part of the Passover meal. Because uh, Jan Hoover put together a tremendous lesson on the Passover meal, and we got to experience those things. And so if, if you got to be a part of that, that, that was a real blessing. And if you didn't, you really missed out. But the instructions are given. And it says, when I see the blood, I will pass over. And I grew up singing that song. Anybody else grew up singing that song, when I see the blood? It was number 200 in our book. <laughs> you know? Uh, and, and for me, it, and I never did completely understand because I always felt like it was, well, that sounds really, you know, like a traditional Jewish thing to me. When I see the blood, I will pass over you because the whole idea of, of the Passover is such a, so heavily steeped in the Jewish tradition and the Jewish faith that I didn't really understand the value and the importance of that statement. When I see the blood... I will spare you. When I see the blood, I will save you. When I see the blood, you will not suffer death, is, is what the message is. And for us as, as Christians in the New Covenant, I think about this, this moment when God looks at me and what he sees is the blood. And to me, that is, that is the moment when it, when it transcends and changes from the old law into the new covenant because now the blood of Christ, which flows and cleanses us, when God sees that blood, He spares us. When we are in that blood of Jesus Christ, we are spared from the destruction. And so, if we look over at, at, uh, at Isaiah, and if you remember the passage... In, in Isaiah that the eunuch was reading in Acts chapter 8. In Acts 8, he was, the, the eunuch is, is um, riding along in his chariot and Philip comes up and the eunuch is reading a passage of scriptures from Isaiah 53. Listen, this is verses 7 and 8 of Isaiah 53. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living, for the transgressions of my people he was stricken. Let's continue reading. And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed and he shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sins of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Amen. And we look at that 
that prophecy about what Jesus was going to do and about who he was and about his purpose. And we see it says he was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And if you remember now, let's go. I may be going to try to tell the story. Go over to John chapter 1. John 1, John the Baptist is out and he's preaching and he's, he's telling people about Jesus and he's telling people about, about the one who is to come. And he said, I'm not the one, but the one is coming who is. This is John chapter 1, when John has been preaching. And beginning in verse 29, listen, this is one of my favorite verses of all time. John 1, 29, the next day John saw Jesus coming toward him. And he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Isn't that fantastic? This, this Lamb, this, this Jesus, is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This is our Passover Lamb. Amen. How, how wonderful is that? How magnificent is that? That we can look at the way the Lamb was sacrificed in the old law... And if we remember now, there was no covenant that did not involve blood. I mean, God's covenants with, the, with his people in the old, old law, they involved blood. And in the sacrifices, the, the priest had to sprinkle blood. And if you're reading your chronological Bible, and you've seen all the sacrifices that had to be made, can you imagine how bloody the temple was? And how bloody that area was around... It's just because so many animals were sacrificed and their blood had to be splashed against the side of the altar. And it's just, can you imagine that amount of blood that was, that was used for the uh, covenant in the old law? And we look at this new covenant and this new lamb and it is one man offered one time for the sins of all. One sacrificial Passover lamb whose blood cleanses us and whose, when God sees that blood on us, he passes over. His destruction, his judgment passes over us and we are found to be holy and redeemed and righteous. Now that, that's, what, that's what that song means now as I, as I read... I read it and reread the lyrics over and over this week. And as I see now, it's not about the Passover. It's not about the Jewish Passover. It is about God passing over us the judgment that would otherwise be ours without the blood of Jesus. It's about the destroyer not destroying us because of the blood of Jesus. And we talked about this a lot last week in, in Hebrews 9 and 10, how how the, the sacrifices are no longer necessary because of the blood of Jesus. And I look at this and I, and I think, man, this, how, can, how can one man make that big a difference? How can one man make that big of a change? And it is because of that one thing that John said when he looked at Jesus and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That's, that's uh, a friend of mine said, when, he's, when he talks about verses that, that mean something to him, he said, that's a bell ringer for me. He said, that's the one that, that we just stands up and says, listen to me. You need to pay attention to this. And so when I read that verse, I think, wow, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God, the one that Isaiah spoke about, the one that Isaiah prophesied about and said, he is the one who bore our transgressions. He is the one who took our sins. He is the one who redeemed us and sanctified us. He is the one whose blood makes all the difference. And if we're looking in Romans chapter 6, we, we find that, that this, this idea of slavery. We were once slaves to something, and we still are. But our slavery now has been changed. We were slaves to our own unrighteousness. We were slaves to our own sin. We were slaves to our own will. We were slaves to Satan. But Jesus and the sacrifice that he made makes us slaves to righteousness. His deliverance of us is immeasurable. And so I look at this concept of, of the sacrifice 
And I look at this idea of, of how things were changed because of Jesus. And I just see how that blood changes everything. I mean, look over at, at, at 1 John. John's writing there in, in his first part of his letter. And beginning in verse 7 of, of John chapter 1, or 1 John 1, it says, If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. And if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so we see the power of the blood of Jesus. And we see the power that it has in our lives and should continue to have day after day after day. And if we look at all the passages in the, in the scriptures about the blood of Jesus, there are, there are, I don't even know how many, there are 30 plus that, that mention specifically the blood of Jesus. But if we look at Ephesians, it talks about the, the, the cleansing power of the blood. Galatians, Paul talks about the cleansing power of the blood. In Romans 3, in Romans 5, he talks about the, the justification that we have through the blood of Jesus. Now, without that blood... There is no Passover. Without that blood, there is no saving from the destroyer. And so as Jesus is, is with his disciples there in, in Matthew, and he, they prepared the Passover feast, and they're, they're eating together, and Jesus says, when he takes the cup, he says, now take this because this is my blood given as a new covenant, given as a sacrifice for you, Y'all, that is now the, the, the Passover blood that when God looks at me and I'm covered in sin and I'm covered in filth and I'm covered in my own desires and I'm covered in all the baggage and all the junk that I've put myself in, when God looks at me, what he sees is the sacrificial blood of Jesus. He doesn't see the mess I've made. He doesn't see all the junk that I have in my life. He sees the sacrificial lamb who has poured out his blood on us and the destroyer, the destruction, the death that awaits otherwise passes over us because we no longer have that burden of sin because, remember Isaiah said it a long time ago, he said, he has borne our transgression. I think about this blood of Jesus and I think about this, this cleansing power. And when I look now at this song, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And get on YouTube or Google or something and look up and read the lyrics of this song. It was written, I think, in the late 19th century. But, but look at it. Read the words and you'll see this is not about the Jewish festival. This is about God's forgiveness that we receive, not because we deserve it, but because the blood of Jesus hides all our sins and blots them out from, from God. Now that is a beautiful, beautiful picture to me. To know that when God sees me, all he sees, church, is redemption. All he sees is cleansing. All he sees is the righteousness of of Jesus because that blood of the sacrificial lamb of the Passover, Jesus Christ covers my sins. Amen. Isn't that a wonderful thought? Amen. So I want us to think about that for, for the next few days. Just think about think about this redeeming power. And think about what John said, what John the Baptist said there in John 1. When he sees Jesus come in, when he is in the presence of Jesus Christ, and he points him out and says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. But I'm going I'm to change that for just a moment for, for my own purposes. Behold 
the Lamb of God who takes away my sins. Amen. Amen. Takes away your sins. See, the world makes it pretty broad. And it makes it that's a pretty broad stroke. Let's bring it home. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the perfect, spotless Lamb of God, offered without blemish, without spot, so that His blood can cover my sins and God's destroyer will pass over. We don't have to suffer death. We don't have to suffer destruction. We don't have to suffer separation from God because of the blood of Jesus Christ, which cleanses us from all our unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. That's all I got to say about that. Hallelujah. Church, we come into contact with that blood through baptism. We're baptized into Christ. We are washed in His blood and cleansed from our sins and we're given a new life and a new identity. We are in strange times right now. We're in strange times. But I will, I will say if anyone at any point feels the need to be washed in that blood, to be cleansed, and to, and to let that blood just cover you, then I'm willing to take the chance. I'm just going to tell you. I'm willing to take the chance, and we will take care of that for you. But if you realize, you know, if you just realize that you've just neglected the blood of Jesus, and you realize that you just have not paid attention and understood the power of the Passover that we experience, y'all, let's pray about that. Let's pray about it right now. Father, we thank you for your love. And we thank you for your mercy. And we thank you for your forgiveness that we receive through the blood of the wonderful Passover lamb, Jesus. And Father, we pray this morning that we can understand who he is and what he has done. And that nothing else in the world is more important to us than that. So Father, we thank you for the forgiveness we have through Jesus. In his name we pray.